The Midwest, specifically the Great Plains area to our south, is known as uh, known through the country as Tornado Alley. But a couple of studies over the past decade show that this hotbed for tornadic activity is on the move. And Jeff actually took a closer look for us at the maps and what this means for people living in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Jeff. Yeah, Aaron, the bold north, no stranger to tornadoes. Our frequency might not be as high as Oklahoma, but it's still a reality for the region. The good news is this apparent shift in Tornado Alley isn't north Northward, so much as it is eastward. So let's start with where Tornado Alley has traditionally been found. This map right here, it came from that study in the Journal of Applied Meteorology and Climatology. It's showing data from 1951 to 1985. And you can see that Oklahoma is sort of this epicenter of the activity spanning northward to Kansas and down to Texas. However, parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin are included, although not as severe. Now the new map shows that shift. This is data from 1986 to 2020. That epicenter has moved over to Mississippi and the entire alley covers more of the East Coast, including parts of West Virginia, Virginia and Pennsylvania. Those areas were white on the previous map. Now, if those maps weren't enough, I want to show you the change by the numbers. I found these stats in the study. Tornadoes in the, U in the Western US specifically dropped by 25% during that span from 1986 to 2020, while tornadoes in the Eastern US went up 12% during the same time frame. Next weather meteorologist Mike Gusnack is joining us now to help us understand what this means. And first, Mike, why is this shift happening? Uh, well, it comes down to, I mean, it's complex as to why severe weather happens in the first place, but it seems like it's coming down to just drier air overall farther west and more moisture being uh, kind of exposed in the central and eastern plains. So that's a big driver of severe weather. Three things you need, lift, instability, and moisture. And so that's the third one. So that's the shift. But in our region, you wanted to look back at just the past two years? Yeah, because there, there are two studies in, in complete opposites, essentially. And this is not necessarily tied to the trend or this research, but it does sort of encapsulate how dry air can have an impact on suppressing severe weather. So last year we had 25 tornado reports in the state of Minnesota the entire summer. Last year was incredibly hot and incredibly dry mm -hmm. and there was much less humidity. So that went to 25 storm reports. Whereas the year before in 2022, when we had a more typical summer, both humidity and heat wise, we had 71 tornado reports. Again, not necessarily tied to that research, but a good encapsulation of how that could be impacting things. And we're in the month of June, well known for severe weather. How does this month compare to the rest of the year when it comes to tornadoes? Yeah, this is one of the peak months for tornadoes here in Minnesota. In fact, it is the peak month. When you look at the t number of tornado totals going from 1950 to 2022, most of them have occurred in June, but there are four months that account for almost 90% of all of our tornadoes, and that's May, June, July, and August. So we got to be aware right now, that's yep. for sure.